Hey guys, welcome to a new video. And the moment you've been waiting for, at least some of you have been waiting for, is here. The custom Quinn LED LED strips are available again, or it's kind of difficult with shipping nowadays. Uh, they are in the air and should be available in, let's say, the next few days or max a week uh, time. So if you've been waiting to get some after we sold out after the initial launch video, if you want to know the specs and the details about uh, the, the, this custom strip, make sure to check that video over there. If you've been wanting to get one, make sure you're on the waiting lists on the website or uh, check if you can order them now. And I will also have a comment pinned down below uh, with a status update uh, when they are actually listed or available in all of the shops. It's just a bit difficult to determine with, uh, with shipping. Right, so as I said, if you want to know the details about the strip, check out that launch video. And for the rest of this video, we're actually going to take a tour that I did uh, last November in the LED strip factory where they made these LED strips, including some shots of the actual custom Quinn LED strips being made. That was, it was really a proud moment for me seeing that happen right in front of my eyes. So uh, join me along with that. It'll be uh, videos and photos I shot during that visit with me voice commenting over it. It'll be a little bit non-scripted, uh, just you know, see how it goes, <laughs> just like this video. And uh, yeah, but if but if the only thing you've been waiting for is that strip and you don't care how it's made, uh, check out the links in the video description. And uh, well, let me know in the comments what you think uh, or in the next live stream, the Discord server, etc. Right, let's get to it. So the first thing we start with is a shot of me being in the factory and then we move immediately to a pick and place machine that is making a RGB cob LED strip. All LED strips this factory made or this location made are cob LED strips and here you can see the machine placing a single color of the RGB strip on the strip material or the, 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 the LED strip material, which is kind of like a flexible PCB basically. So you can see it picking it up from this uh, blue uh, circle, which has all the diodes on there, and then placing it on the pads on the LED strip, which have been prepared with a little bit of paste beforehand. You can see this is pretty fast and they have lots of different variants and things they make, and they also have different processes because this was an RGB strip, but for instance, the machine you're seeing right now is for making a single color strip. And because they only need to place a single color, they can do that a lot faster. In this case, they're placing blue LEDs, which will have a phosphor layer over it later. We'll also see that, which will then make a, a white LED, either warm white or cold white, etc. That's determined by the phosphor layer they put on top of it. Now this is called CUB or chip on board because the LEDs are basically bare diodes or bare LEDs instead of being in a package like on 50-50 LED strip or something like that where the 50-50 is the package. Here you can see a close up of those tiny, tiny little light emitting diodes. Uh, there's thousands of them on this little uh, circle here. So after they've been placed on these half meter sections, they check each section to see if everything went right. Again, this is for the single color blue version, which can then with, with phosphor become a white LED strip. They have these jigs, which clamp in the LED strips all at the same time. She has to slap it around a little bit to make sure all the connections are okay. And that way she can check a lot of them at the same time. They also have a different manufacturing method where they manufacture giant long rolls of this LED strip. And so they also have a different method of checking that with these two ladies in a booth, basically doing the same work as the lady on the half meter sections was doing before that. Now, after these half meter sections are done, 
they go to the phosphor application machine, I don't know what they call it, where they uh, fix these uh, half meter sections in place and then I have a carefully calibrated phosphor which will turn the blue diode into white light by filtering out all of the other frequencies that are needed. already starting to look a lot more like the LED strips we also get. Once that step is done and they have all these half meter sections, they go to uh, a person that solders leads to these sections so that you can actually power them and then another person actually manually joins the sections into the lengths that the customer ordered. This is also why when you get a five meter strip, it's basically 10 pieces of half a meter joined together. It's mainly because of manufacturing reasons. Once that is done, the LED strips get separated and then go to the next bench where they get tested again to make sure that the final product as it is assembled works and is actually mechanically stable, I guess you could call it, because they really slap these things around to make sure everything is working correctly. And after that, they might need to do a little bit of repairs or add some extra leads or spool them up on a roll uh, depending on how the customer ordered them. Another step they do is they take the finalized product and put them in their testing chamber. Now, I wish I could get a sphere like this to do official measurements, but sadly they're quite expensive and bulky. So I do my measurements my own way, but yeah. So let's take a look at the Quinn LED custom strip specifically. First, they take the half meter sections and they actually put on all the SMD components like they would on a normal PCB. Again, that's also why these are half a meter long, because if they'd be longer, well, that would be very troublesome because the machine would also have to grow a lot. So first, they place the SMD components such as the resistor, capacitor, and the WS2814F chip. And once the whole panel is done, it's actually reflowed and then checked if that part is okay and once it's okay it goes to a different machine which basically only does one function and that is taking a led diode from a giant reel and putting it in a spot now they do this per color because instead of uh, with the single color cop strip the this these aren't all blue diodes because then they, they you know they can't change that with a phosphor because it needs to be different colors they actually have to put on red green blue and white diodes i believe in this case they're placing the red diode which is slightly larger than the other diodes um that's more to do with light and color and you know, stuff like that um, but they actually run these panels through the same machine or multiple machines they set up for that, each for their own single color. Here you can see the Quinn LED panel of half a meter by X amount of strips uh, having the single color diode placed. But if we take a look at some other cop strips I saw over there, you can see the red, green and blue and dual white colors because this is an RGB CCT strip uh, clearly in, in their naked form basically before the silicone layer gets applied, which basically shields them because these are 
bare chips without any protection otherwise. So the post-processing steps for the Quinn LED strips are mostly the same except that it's digital and RGBW than the other cob strips we just saw. I don't have footage from that, but there is a post-processing step you can do after that, and that is if you want weather rated strip. Now, the Quinn LED custom strips come in IP20, so normal indoor use, or in IP65. Now, this IP65 isn't what you might be used to. It's not a epoxy layer that's flowed on top of it, like with a 50-50 strip, but it's actually enc encased in silicone. Often this is also re referred to as IP66 or 67 maybe. I don't know exactly why they call this an IP65 process, because it is fully sealed in there. It's not IP68, which would mean also uh, injected with silicone, so then it'd be rated for underwater. But it's officially IP65, so rated for uh, splashes and uh, rain and things like that. But this is actually a silicone encasing molding process, as you can see by this giant street here. They have a machine where the silicone goes into and where the LED strip goes into, and then a head which basically forms the silicone right over the strip. So this isn't a sleeve they... Uh, they, they put it in later or they, they pulled it through. This is actually molded around the strip, which gives a much tighter finish, which I think is very nice. And well, that is the end of the factory tour. We were only there a little bit, also to talk about business and things like that. But who knows, maybe those strips in the shot were the actual strips you might have bought early, uh, l late last year. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, the new batch should be a lot bigger, so more should be available. But then again, we thought enough would be available last time, but it was also a trial run to see if the uh, demand would be there. So I don't, basically, I don't know how long it will last. We will make more if it runs out. But check the links in the description and the pinned comment to see if they're available already. If you decide to buy one of the strips, thank you very much. And thank you for watching this video. <laughs> See you guys next time. Bye-bye.